morning. Honourable guests, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to Iceland's Geothermal Conference. The Ministry for Foreign Affairs in Iceland has been a strong supporter of this event, and we believe that Iceland can share with others our own experience, both where we have faced challenges and, more importantly, where we have succeeded. Iceland is an excellent showcase for geothermal development, and I know many of our guests present at this conference know and are familiar with our geothermal history. The overriding theme of this third Iceland Geothermal Conference is operability, feasibility and practicality. These three captations do signify, in essence, Iceland's experience from using geothermal as clean, sustainable and stable energy resource. During the conference, you will have the opportunity to hear from leading experts from numerous countries, discussing core aspects of geothermal utilization. As newly appointed Foreign Minister of Iceland, I am particularly pleased to welcome two leading figures in the global arena for sustainable development. Ms. Rachel Kite, the CEO of Sustainable Energy for All, who will be addressing the conference today, and Mr. Adam Imin, Director General of the International Renewable Energy Arena, who will be giving a keynote address during the closing plenary session tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot achieve sustainable long-term economic growth and development without committing to sustainable use of our natural resources. Therefore, increased access to renewable energy is one of the key priorities in Iceland's development cooperation and foreign policy. Last week in New York, 171 states, including Iceland, signed the climate agreement we reached in COP21 in Paris. In the run-up of the COP21, more than 180 countries submitted their respective intended nationally determined contribution, or the INDCs, as the guiding principles in how to address the negative effects of climate change. Nations are increasingly looking towards renewable energy as a viable future solution for a more sustainable future. Combined with ambitious goals adopted last fall, the international community now has a strong framework to end energy poverty by increasing substantially the share of renewable energy in the global energy mix. Iceland will remain committed to contributing to specific targets as a part of our common vision for 2030, paving the way for ending poverty, combat combating climate change and fighting inequality. Iceland has demonstrated for years that utilization of rene renewable resources like hydro and geothermal power <clears throat> can enhance economic development and growth in many different ways. In this regard, access to clean energy has proven critical to people's creative deployment of geothermal in many resource parks in the country, which have given impetus for different types of activities, such as horticulture production, tourist activities, biotechnologies, drying of foods, and indeed, and indeed many others. Through this conference, it is my sincere hope that we can share some of this experience with others and thereby add our voice to many that are promoting sound and sustainable future in the world. Harassing, harnessing, not harassing, harnessing geothermal energy is an established and proven technology that had been available for more than 100 years. This technology, however, has not been widespread globally and it must be one of our common sets of goal to increase access to geothermal on the one hand, but also, no less importantly, 
to combine our efforts in cutting production costs, as is becoming so evident both the solar and wind energies. Renewable energy technologies are today among the most cost-competitive options for power generation, and geothermal has to be an important factor in this development if we're supposed to succeed. Despite drop in oil prices in recent, in recent past, investments in renewables have soared over the same time. This can, in part, be attributed to increasing climate awareness and competitiveness of renewables. Experience has shown that in order for geothermal to become a more significant part of the future global energy mix, geothermal, geothermal stakeholders must address how to appeal better to global investors, find ways to overcome inherent risk aspects of assessing geothermal resources and thereby enhance its feasibility and attractiveness in the future. The Global Geothermal Alliance, which was launched during the COP21, is a consorted effort by governments and intergovernmental agencies, as well as the private sector, to promote wider penetration of geothermal energy. The Alliance is also a platform for providing customized support to fundamental challenges that geothermal is comforted with, especially in developing countries. In order to promote these and other important issues, the Global Geothermal Alliance is currently developing a detailed work plan identifying specific geothermal investment projects that are facing policy, legal, regulatory, funding, or capacity building challenges, with priority giving to the most mature projects or potential that would result in high impact on the energy mix and the economy in the given country. Through, the, I, through these efforts of the Alliance, the Icelandic government bears strong hopes of seeing geothermal energy contributing increasingly to the global energy mix. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been a priority in Iceland's foreign policy to advocate and support global sustainable development. This has, not the least, been evident in promoting geothermal as a viable, clean and sustainable energy resource. We have, since 1978, hosted the United Nations University Geothermal Training Program, where over 600 fellows had graduated from the core program and over 1,000 participated in numerous regional courses. Similarly, Iceland has been a strong partner of the World Bank Group in advocating geothermal, especially, with, especially within the Energy Sector Management Assistant Program, ESMAP. Earlier this week, I had the honor to open ESMAP Global Geothermal Development Plan and which took place here in Reykjavik, with representatives from all over the world. ESMAP has been our leading ally in advancing geothermal energy in East Africa along the Great African Rift Valley, where Iceland is currently working in several countries through bilateral agreements. It is our firm belief that East Africa can harness significant geothermal energy for the benefit of its people. Currently, our main support program is in Africa as regards to the Exploratorian project, which is co-funded by the Nordic Development Bank. What we want to do, we want to implement in good cooperation and coordination with other organizations including the World Bank, African Union Commission, and UNEP. Through the past years, the project has worked with various countries, including Ethiopia, Kenya, Djibouti, Tanzania, Eritrea, Rwanda, Burundi, and Zambia. The objectives to assist countries to increase the knowledge of the viability of their geothermal resources 
and provide training and build capacity among local experts to carry on with the development of geothermal projects. Iceland has placed strong emphasis on support in the early stages of the, of the geothermal exploration. It is essential for countries to gain an understanding of geothermal resource potential and to have high quality studies and models for their prospects, which will reduce risk of the earlier stages of exploration drilling. Surface exploration studies are now being implemented in various countries, and we look forward to see these projects further developed. It is clear that geothermal energy can play an important role as clean and renewable energy resource for several countries in Africa. The European continent has also potential for harnessing low temperature areas for district heating. Doing so would be in line with energy policy objectives of the region for more competitive, secure and sustainable energy system and also to meet the long-term 2050 greenhouse gas reduction target. Through the agreement on the European Economic Area and our financial contrib contribution to the EEA, Iceland puts strong emphasis on geothermal utilization. We have done so in the current financial mechanism and we will continue to do so in the upcoming mechanism. Finally, we cannot forget about women's empowerment and gender equality. Integrating gender perspectives in renewable energy programs and policy dialogue in, is essential to ensure equal access to service, benefits and opportunities for women and men and limit disproportional, expo disproportional exposure to risks. I therefore encourage all of us to further consider and implement effective approaches for gender mainstreaming into our work in geothermal energy development. Dear guests, I said at the outset of my address that Iceland could serve as a good showcase of the impact of the utilization of geothermal energy. By showing the development that has taken place in this country. In this context, I want to compliment the organizers of Iceland Geothermal Conference to offer site visits tomorrow and Friday for those interested. I strongly encourage you to take part in these visits and I hope that they may inspire you. Last but not least, I want to thank the members of the Icelandic Geothermal Cluster and Geekon for organizing the conference for the excellent co collaboration during the preparation of Iceland's Geothermal Conference 2016. In Iceland, we can not only preach geothermal gospel, but we live it as well. And I hope that you will see and experience this over the next three days. I wish you a very successful conference. Thank you.